All right, so today I have a uh, gear overview, build overview, and general leveling video for the Wanderer that I finished recently. Uh, some people might have seen me finish the uh, leveling process from 170 to 175. I did a live stream for that. And uh, that video is not going to be included in this one. So if you want to see the leveling from 170 uh, to 175, that's going to be on that live stream, uh, and that's Nightmare Clock Tower. So there's going to be no Nightmare Clock Tower in this video at all. Uh, if you want to see that, you're going to have to check out a couple minutes of the live stream just to get kind of the gist of what it's about. Uh, this video is pretty much just going to go over the equipment and the stats and the build for the Wanderer that I decided to make. Um, all in all, I think it was really fun. I like it uh, actually better than Mechanic, which I just made the video for last week. Um, I've had both of these guys finished for a while, but I am still trying to catch up on making the videos for them. Um, but yeah, first things first, we have Scubana here, uh, and she's the 175. 56 Wanderer. Uh, I didn't finish the job 60 because I was on stream, and it would have taken a lot longer, uh, probably like another hour to get it um, if I was just doing all job experience. And uh, it was already quite a few hours, so I didn't want to continue. Um, so she is 56 right now, and there's not really any need to um, speed into getting the uh, last few job levels. It's really not really that relevant right now. But yeah, first things first, we got the headgear, and uh, this is the Night Sparrow hat. It's the community headgear item. Basically, it's designed specifically for performers, uh, specifically for Wanderer. It gives 200 SP, and it reduces the fixed casting time of skills by 5% per level of voice lessons that I know. And it reduces SP consumption of severe rainstorm by 10. It also increases damage by 25% if it's plus 9. So we check all the boxes there, and we get all of the benefits. Uh, I have voice lessons level 10, so it gives 50% uh, less fixed cast time. Now, that comes in handy. Uh, before you have 120 dex, because then you'll just get the instant cast from the temporal dex boots. Uh, it helps it so it helps make it so that you can level earlier on without tanking a lot of damage when you're severe rainstorm leveling in, like magma or places like that. Uh, so it's really nice for the fixed cast time if you can get those get get voice lessons to level 10 after you get severe rainstorm level 5. So for mid gear, uh, this is the this kind of sets the pace of the build, uh, this item here, because it combos with Agi. Um, also worth noting, Severe Rainstorm scales off of Dex and Agi. Agi is key to the formula. It's important to have a lot of it. So even on a Maestro, you're going to want pretty high Agi. Um, I mean, they use impressive rifts, so you're going to want Agi on them anyways, but maybe not as much as a Wanderer would get. Uh, so I went 120 Agi, 120 Dex, 100 Int, 75 vit and then what I should have done was not get any strength or luck and just put more into vit but I originally wanted to get luck for the PDM so that I could get defense piercing but it wouldn't have been enough to be relevant and then I wanted to go strength for like mob scarf because if you get 80 uh, you get some benefits there but I couldn't fit enough strength in the build so ultimately it's just like quality of life for weight limit um, but I would get rid of these for the next free stat reset they offer at some point down the road but uh, without further ado the imperial feather is kind of the bread and butter of the build uh, because it kind of like I said dictates the stats it made me get 120 agi instead of a lesser amount um, but what it does is it gives attack speed plus one percent another attack speed plus one percent if it's if you have 108 agi and then attack speed plus one if you have 108 agi. So it's attack speed plus one, attack speed plus 2%. It also combos with the Royal Guard necklace, and that's what we're using it for. It gives 40 attack base, then 60 for 108 agi, and then 80 for 120 agi. Um, so all in all, it's 180 uh, attack for this mid gear and head uh, lower gear combo. It also increases your attack speed by 15%. So it's actually 17% plus one flat attack speed if you co uh, consider the base effect of the Imperial Feather. So the fact that you get 120 Agi and you get the attack speed bonuses from the Imperial Feather, you're almost guaranteed to get 193 attack speed, um, 
which was kind of something I was going for, even though crit wanderer is not a thing. Uh, but yeah, so mid, uh, the armor that I defaulted most of the time was evil dragon armor. I've gone over this on a lot of videos. This is such a vital gear for leveling right now. Um, basically, it doesn't work with, um, Nidhogger Shadow Garb, it doesn't work with Vanergand Helm, and it doesn't work with Rideward Hat. Uh, but it does work very well on its own. Um, I never had any SP problems, and it was really important um, that I used this armor because I was using the Temporal Dex Boots with Hawkeye. And what Hawkeye does is it increases my Dex by 200 for 5 seconds, but each second it consumes 50 SP, so 250 SP every time Hawkeye goes off. Uh, it's pretty important to regenerate the SP obviously, so you can keep using Severe Rainstorm on cooldown. Uh, the highlight, or the main weapon for the build, uh, is the Bow of Storm. Uh, it increases your ranged attack damage by 30%, decreases Severe Rainstorm cooldown by 2 seconds, and increases the consumption by 15. So your, your Night Sparrow kind of cancels out the SP increase from this. Uh, also, it has pretty high attack. It's a level 4 weapon which makes it perfect for the true Ten Trentini card, which increases damage to Severe Rainstorm by 20%, another 20% if the weapon is level 4, and another 20% if the weapon is plus 10. So we check all the boxes, we get 60% Severe Rainstorm damage, plus we can spam it on cooldown, uh, which is great for leveling. It means that when you fly wing, you'll just be able to use it right away and you don't have to like kite around until it comes off cooldown and hope you don't die. Uh, if you're feeling pretty safe for your mid gear, you can use Fallen Angel Wing. Uh, this has uh, Expert Archer Enchants and a Men Black card. Since the build is 120 dex, since we're severe rainstorm damage focused, we're getting 12% ranged attack damage from that, and then I think 20% from the enchantments. And then, of course, the Emerald Rings are very good for Wanderer and Maestro, and even uh, Ranger, actually. So it, what it gives is 10 Agi, 10 Vit, and 10 Dex if you know Double Strafe level 10. It also gives 100 Attack if you know Double Strafe level 10. And for every base level you have, you get 1% extra damage with Double Strafe and Arrow Shower, which is insane because you have 175 base levels, right? So that's like 350% damage with Arrow Shower and uh, Double Strafe. So it's very, very good for double strafing with, uh, even on Ranger, if you're only using one, it's still a pretty big damage bump for that. Uh, and then, let's see, reduce SP cost of Impressive by a song by eight, 18, but that's kind of like not very important. Um, but yeah, two of these, they do add together, so they do stack, you can use both of them. Uh, alternatively, you can use uh, the Temporal Ring if you want to get instant cast. Because you're using Hawkeye, it's going to give you 40 dex, um, which will give you instant cast most of the time. Uh, unless you have really low int or something, it should give you instant cast. gives 40 dex, and that's pretty consistent. Uh, it's not as good as the percent damage increase that you get from the Emerald Ring. This is more damage, but this is actually good quality of life if you want instant cast and you don't want to use foods to get it. If you're using stat foods and you have instant cast, there's almost no reason to use one, but it is nice to have on hand. Uh, if you need to pierce defense, I would use the mighty black threaded armor. Uh, because PDM, you're not going to be able to get enough luck to make it useful. And there's no upper headgear that bypasses everything, so really the only option that you have to pierce defense is like a samurai specter card, which would be worse than a true Trentini card in terms of damage, or using Black Threaded, which is 70% damage bypassing, which is very good, that's good enough. For Shadow Gear, I run the Physical Shadow set comboed with the Malicious uh, set, and a Attack Speed Garment. So we get Attack Speed plus one from that, and then we get a good amount of attack from the Physical. Uh, the good thing about physical is it's the weapon and the two accessories, so it works really well with malicious. It also works really well with the um, liberation set if I'm MVPing. 
Uh, if I'm doing Bio 4, I would just use an anti-medium shield, some damage reduction in the headgear, a wind or fire armor, and the unfrozen set. Uh, you want the unfrozen set even if you have an unfrozen armor in case your armor breaks. Uh, and you, you don't want to freeze. And then if you're doing any instances or MVPs or bosses that require uh, shadow or demon or undead, then Abyss Dress is a good thing to have uh, for damage because it's going to increase your severe rainstorm by like 80% or 90% or something like that. Uh, and then like really niche situations, there's going to be uh, the Poison Grass Sunnies with Mob Scarf and the Eggshell of Poison Grass for Face Worm killing. Uh, you can either do Severe Rainstorm or Auto Attack, but Severe Rainstorm is going to do a lot more damage. And then if you want an Attack Bump, the Royal Guard combo is very good. And then of course for leveling a Nightmare Clock Tower, you would be crazy not to use a fl uh, flappy, Flapping Angel Wing. Also uh, worth mentioning... Uh, you could, if you're auto-attacking, use a double liberation plus 15 crimson bow. And let's see. Uh, you can also use a deviant if uh, a fallen angel wing instead of menblat if you feel like you're going to be taking a lot of damage on whatever you're leveling against. So that is the equipment. That's the build. Now I want to go ahead and get into the leveling uh, part of the video. So we'll get that going right now. All right, so this leveling portion is going to be a little bit uh, faster than the mechanic one. Uh, I did level in a few less places uh, because I was able to level up a lot faster on this character. Um, but I wanted to include this clip up first about leveling the dancer in Harpies. Uh, I opted to level in Harpies the entire time uh, from 1 to 99.70 because the turn-in map was really bad for soloing. And it just takes a long time to wait for parties, and it kind of sucks to even share with parties. And then, you know, I end up feel like I spend more time waiting for the party than if I had just gotten started leveling solo. Um, so we're doing bounty boards for the harpies. Uh, I, this is something that I normally do, uh, unless I can solo the the low turn in as a uh, transcendent character. Um, but yeah, it's kind of funny because I just kind of went all out on gearing this thing like you can see the ride word hat like the sleptners and then i think that's the um deviant uh fallen angel wing so it's like we're taking no damage we're double strafing we're regening hp and sp we're getting turn-ins every three to five minutes uh you know spamming uh the experience quest for that uh and all in all like it was pretty fun it was pretty therapeutic it was like target practice just trying to go for the harpies as you could find them like arrow shower would probably be faster but yeah it's <laughs> it was pretty fun I, I actually liked leveling that way um and then early on i leveled a bit in the mid turn in map once i got severe rainstorm and this turn in was actually pretty nice because snow ears are slow they have a good amount of hp uh you hit them a lot uh, one of the things about Severe Rainstorm that makes it a really good leveling ability for leeching is the fact that it hits multiple times per second. Like, it hits th uh, over three seconds, and it's just over three hits per second. Um, so yeah, you end up having a lot of opportunities to leech damage, and then, yeah, be like, I'm just using a malicious... Um, Elven bow at this point, just because it's nice, like it's just quality of life. I could have survived on the evil dragon armor alone, but having the extra leech really helps. And also, of course, when you have such a low HP pool like Wanderer does, you're going to want to bring some HP uh, regeneration potions, like just in case you need them. But you should be leeching your HP to full most of the time, especially. Uh, if you can mob pretty big, like when in doubt, mob bigger and uh, try and <laughs> leech SP off of it because the more times you hit something, the more chances you have to leech. Uh, you can see we're using the temporal ring on this map because we're trying to get cl as close to instant cast as we can since we didn't have 120 decks yet. Uh, but yeah, now leveling in magma. Um, in, when the turn in for mid TI didn't have the quest available, like I'd finished it for the day, I would just go to Magma. And this was right after maintenance, so the spawns were pretty good. 
and you can see my cast time is already getting a pretty uh, pretty fast and we're shooting for 120 decks as fast as possible but yeah basically all you're doing is you're fly winging around and then you're walking diagonally usually to try and gather as many mobs as you can or circle around you know try and make sure that uh, you're getting as much as you can before you stop in severe rainstorm and then try and make sure there's some distance between you and the mob when you start casting so that they die before they hit you um, you'll still you know leech damage after you cast the ability to regenerate us or hp and sp but of course taking as little damage as possible is always a good idea but yeah magma is a go-to place for me uh wanderer does it really well uh if you want to see honestly if you want to see the real really good damage that wanderer can do i would check out the clock tower um stream on the channel because you know once the hawk Hawkeye doesn't really have a chance to go off on these monsters, so you can't really see how much it really helps the damage. Um, and you might be able to see it a little bit more in this one, but you can also see uh, I might I think I recarded the evil dragon armor to be Ifrit because the red lick turns and the gold acidus both do fire attacks, which are they would hurt a lot if I uh, didn't have a fire armor. So that, plus I used a deviant armor because everything hit pretty hard. But once I got those two gears uh, straightened out, um, leveling on this turn-in was super easy for a high turn-in. I got to 150, I believe, doing this. And then I just started Nightmare Clock Tower right away. But Gold Acid is a really good experience. The Lick Turns are a really good experience. Uh, all in all, it was like an experience pinata here. Uh, yeah, it was... A very this was a good good grouping and it kind of goes with what i was saying before in the last video with the mechanic the difference between a good turn in week and a bad turn in week is so much difference in progress like if it's a good turn in you can get to 150 in a couple days if it's a bad turn in you're just gonna have to work on an alt character or something because it's really not worth your time to do things that are like not optimal in the game there's so much that you can do instead but yeah, this is kind of just the leveling up into Nightmare Clock Tower. If you want to see more, I definitely recommend that stream. Um, but thanks for watching. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. And if you have questions, let me know.